Okay, in part two of our video, I want to discuss a few things that the book does not discuss. Um, for example, the book discusses the idea of um, installing Linux from various media, from DVD, from hard disk, from uh, uh, thumb drives, or whatnot. However, um, the book always installs onto a hard drive. What I'm about to say is we don't actually always have to install Linux on a hard drive. The way we normally install Linux is we put it onto our system's hard drive. We have a computer that has a hard drive and we install it on the hard drive. However, as you have seen with the Nopic CD or many other live CDs, it's possible to run Linux on a computer that does not have a hard drive directly off of the uh, DVD or CD drive. Um, you can, that's a little slow, but as you may have seen, it actually works pretty well. It also has the advantage, since that's a read-only media, it's very hard for a system cracker to break into the system and do any real damage, since um, he can only, uh, he can't write to the DVD. Um, although he can write to what's up in RAM and he can damage the system until it's rebooted. Or maybe he could even get a hold of the BIOS and damage the BIOS and screw up your hardware. But still, uh, these are very secure systems by and large where you're running directly off of a DVD. Unfortunately, and some people do run that way. Unfortunately, they're not very dynamic in that, you know, if you've got a web page, a website, it's encoded onto the DVD and you can't change it dynamically and things like that. Still, it's valuable for various things. Um, another place that you may be able to install Linux is, um, let me see what I've got here. Ah, here's a, well, up here. There is a 32, um, gigabyte thumb drive. Um, well, 32 gigabyte is sort of overkill. Um, 4 gigabyte might well be no, uh, um, well enough. But I could install Linux onto a thumb drive, just like it was a hard disk, and run uh, Linux on this thing just like it was a hard disk. Of course, these wear out with time. Well, hard disk do too. And um, they are slower than a hard disk, but um, it still might perform quite satisfactory for um, many tasks. I indeed, it will. Um, and I do occasionally use Linux from thumb drives. Another thing you can do is uh, put Linux onto like one of these little uh, camera cards, um, an SD or XD card, and run Linux off of that. And if you look in things like Linux Journal or which is now out of public, uh, is an online only publication, or other magazines, you'll see things like Plug Computers, uh, which is a small computer, three inch by three inch single board type computer that you can use to build um, small boxes with routers, um, wireless devices, wireless access points. And one way of building these is to install something like Linux. Most of them have space to put a SD card of some sort into them. And generally, you use that instead of a hard drive. Uh, for one thing, it's a lot cheaper. Um, and for many of these applications, it's probably more reliable as well. Um, um, so. My emphasis here is you don't have to have a hard drive in, in a computer. And computers do not have to look like these big boxy things um, or um, that we're, that we built in the 1980s and we're used to. Computers may well be um, um, small devices that we don't even think of as a computer. There's no screen to them. There's no keyboard. Um, they're just a little box with three or four 
uh, flashing green lights sitting on our desk, or they're a tablet that we carry around with us. Well, this isn't a computer, but you know, it could be. Um, or they're a little box that is sitting in the back of a refrigerator that controls our refrigerator. Um, and in those cases, many of those, some of them will have hard drives, sometimes very, very small hard drives. Um, others, they do not have a hard drive. They substitute it with something like an SD card or a, um, um, I guess, a DVD, um, although I've never seen that. Uh, that's too mechanical. Or something of that type. Um, another thing that you can do is you can actually install Linux onto a server where there's no hard drive in your computer, and you boot the computer using the network card, and it boots over the network off of a server that basically just has a lot of um, uh, computers on it. There is a system for Linux that's quite popular called uh, Linux Terminal Server Project. Uh, that is described on a Wikipedia page here, uh, Linux Terminal Server Project. It's very popular with schools. Uh, Riverdale School District has used uh, these for years. Uh, basically, the computers are that students sit at at the school are thin client machines. Um, that do not have a disk drive or anything like that in them. They use the network card to boot from a server. They boot Linux, and which brings up a little tiny menu. And from that, you can choose, I want to run Windows. I want to run Linux. Uh, most students choose Linux. And then it will boot a Linux or a Windows, which actually runs on another server. and um, and um, it, it's Linux running, booting over a network that's running on their thin client. And then they're viewing through some sort of software like VNC, virtual um, network. I forget what VNC stands for. But, but like VNC, then they're viewing uh, either Windows or Linux, depending on what they decided to boot on. Um, that's a very popular type software uh, that's used. And everything runs over the network. Um, there's other systems, too. This is only one of many that runs everything over the network using a thin client system. Um, Linux Terminal Server Project is at uh, ltsp.org. And you can read more about it there. Um, OK, um, back to what we were talking about here in terms of, of um, uh, system, uh, running systems that don't necessarily use a hard drive or putting, uh, putting your system into more advanced or, or oh well, more unusual ways. Um, for live CDs, I really like Nopix. And I'd like to look at just a few features of Nopix. It really is different than most live distributions because it was um, designed to be ran as a live um, CD, whereas most live CDs are designed to promote their distribution. They give you enough of the live experience that you decide to install their system onto the hard drive. Nopix is different because it's designed to, in, to be used in production mode as a live uh, DVD. Um, let's take a little look at Nopix. And um, we've looked at Nopix before, but I want to look at it a little more carefully. I've installed Nopix here on, uh, I've built a virtual machine. And on my virtual machine, Let's see if I can see the details. Um, push my storage. Um, for the DVD, um, 
under the storage portion of the virtual machine for Nopix. On the DVD, I basically have um, this as a, um, um, I have my ISO image online on a disk. So I'm not actually using the DVD, but I'm using a ISO image of the DVD that is stored on hard drive. Uh, I also have a hard drive configured here, which is only an 8 gigabyte hard drive, because I'm really not using the hard drive much. And I went in, I booted Nopix, and I used the command um, mkfs.ntfs to uh, format that hard drive as a NTF, as a Windows NTFS hard drive. I normally would make that a Linux hard drive, but I wanted to prove that all of this works on a Windows disk, so I made it a Windows hard drive. Okay, so let's boot our system, which will then boot off the ISO image. And it is coming up. It is booting. I'm going to hit F3. The F3 button brings up a lot of extra commands that um, called cheat codes that I can type to bring Nopix up. As an example, I can type Nopix 64. That will boot my Nopix as a 64-bit uh, operating system. Um, some of the cheat codes are here. There's only a few cheat codes here. But if I would go over to, um, and I, I think they're on the CD someplace, DVD someplace, but I don't remember where. But I can go over to um, the net, go to nopix.net wiki cheat codes, and um, that will give me a list of all the current cheat codes. And there's a lot of cheat codes I can use. Um, for example, going back here, I could also use, uh, well, 64, that's fine. I, if I don't want to bring it up in um, using the LXDE um, display system, I could bring that up in um, KDE by just simply adding the command. Um, Desktop equal KDE, or desktop equal GNOME, whatever I want to do. I'm happy with the LDFX, so LXDE, well, the default one. Um, another interesting cheat code that I can use, let's go back here, is this one here that says to hard drive. Whoop. And what I'll do here is I will put in to hard drive whoop, equal slash DEV slash. Now, my hard drives are not HDA, HDB, but they are SDA1. Uh, uh, that's my NTFS drive. Now, let's watch what happens if I hit a carriage return here. Um, I should also mention that there are additional cheat codes for things like uh, uh, to fiddle with the graphics cards uh, or graphics resolution, um, to fiddle with the horizontal and vertical scan rates, um, and so on. There's And if you look at the web page, there's lots of them. OK, what this is doing is this actually takes and moves uh, a copy of the DVD from the DVD, which in my case is actually an ISO image on the disk, but uh, forget that for now. It will copy that onto your hard drive up at the root level. Um, and we will continue this in part three of our video, which um, I'll start up as soon as uh, I end this one.